Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at a super essential part of iOS development and that is how we can add labels and customize them in our, our iOS apps. So first and foremost, hit that like button below for more content on iOS. Helps out the video and channel a lot. That being said, let's fire up Xcode and create a brand new project. Single view app. Call it what, what you want. We're going to call it label. Save it. Hit command R once Xcode loads to build and run. And while it's doing its thing, let's expand the window here. And also this side to give ourselves some more room to work. And we see we have this blank app. So let's go first and foremost and jump to our storyboard. If I can spell storyboard today, we're going to set the background color of this to black. And we're going to add a label. So simply hit this, search for a label, and drag it in. Oh, man, I can't drag it today. It's not my day today. There we go. And the text is black by default, so we can come up here and change the color of this. Let's make it a white. And let's leave it like so and just run our app again by hitting Command-R. And we see our label. Awesome. So let's start customizing it and also manipulating it in code. So to manipulate it in code, we need to add a IB outlet for it. And the way we do that is coming in here and we're going to do an IB outlet. It's going to be a var. We're going to call it my label and it's going to be a UI label with a force on wrap. Let's go back to the main storyboard. Let's right click on our view controller and drag from my label to our label. And lastly, let's add some constraints to this so we can test on different screen sizes. Let's do, um, let's actually do 200, 200 add, and let's center this in both vertically and horizontally in the container like so. So let's start talking about customizing. So like, you can probably imagine and also see in other apps, we can change a bunch of things on here. Um, if we come up here, we can see we have our text color. We have the font. Uh, we have alignment. So let's actually do centered. And let's, uh, let's play with this font. So we can, of course, change the size and it's the system font. Or we can hit this and we get a bunch of font options. So we can actually pick a different font size. We can do custom. We can all do all these like textile presets. Let's do custom and we see we get a font family selector, which has this pretty long list of fonts and you can definitely bring in custom fonts. Also, we're going to skip that in this video though, but let's pick, um, I don't know. Let's pick something a little fun. This looks kind of cool. Let's pick this font and we can also pick the style. In this case, we only have bold, but if we actually pick, let's say this one, this one, we have regular, bold, and italic. Uh, we're going to pick uh, italic. Let's bump this font size to something larger, like so. Hit that. What else can we do in here? Um, so there is this field in here called lines, which is often a source of confusion. Lines basically specifies the number of lines, as you can imagine, that your label should roll over onto. But people often have the question, what if I'm dynamically setting text? Let's say like a label is going to have a person's first name and last name. You don't know how much space it's going to take up. And you also don't know what device they're using. So how many lines should it be? So you might want the label to wrap onto multiple lines. So to do that, you can actually decrement this to zero. And now your label will, will wrap onto multiple lines. So let's actually set this to two and Let's make our text longer and see what that does when we have super long text. So if I say, whoops, if I come in here and type in, this is a long piece, piece of text to show. You see after this, it gives you the dot, 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 the truncate, truncate the text. But if I come here and hit this again and make it zero, uh, make this zero. 
whoops, well now it's one. Let's make it, if I could hit it today, let's make a zero and come back to this. We see now our text wraps uh, onto a third line because that's how long the text is. The caveat to this uh, zero line kind of workaround, which actually isn't a workaround, it's a feature, is if your text is even longer than the actual frame size, your text will still cut off because even though it's zero lines that we've specified, which means wrap as many lines as you need, the frame of this actual UI label is 200 by 200, which is explicitly set by us. And this box will not be scrollable. So if we actually run this in our simulator, we'll see that this, uh, this label box is not scrollable. So what we would need to do in a situation like this is add the label to like a scroll view or something um, to make sure that it's scrollable or make this tappable to expand, something like that to allow the user to see the whole amount of text. So let's click this again and come over here and see what else we got going on. So we have this, uh, this option. So this line break, uh, basically we can specify uh, how we want the next line to be uh, broken from the previous. So do we want a word to have a hyphen in it or do we want it to be character wrapping or do we want it to be word wrapping? So in this case, uh, none of these care. Well, this one wraps. So the you can see got split. Well, actually, it didn't because I didn't spell it correctly. Let's do that, and we can see that gets split up to th and then at down here because we're line breaking by the character. Now, if we change this to be by word, you'll see that this moves around. We d instead of having um, characters break up or a word broken up on new lines, we have the actual word get shifted. What else do we got in here? Let's see. So we have a couple of other cool things like your mode, your interaction. You can set opacity on it. You can also set a background color. So let's pick a background color to this. That's probably not a great choice because now it's not easy to read. Let's pick something a bit better to contrast. And if we run this, we can again see the background of this label. Uh, so let's head back to our view controller and show how we could actually do all this manipulation through code. So because we have a my label, we can say, uh, we can specify the text of the label actually first and foremost here. We can also specify the text color. We can specify the text alignment. Basically anything you can do in the storyboard, you can do here in code. We can specify the number of lines. Whoops, we don't need the semicolon. And lastly, let's specify the background color as, uh, let's do white. And like so, we can see all of our code specified um, rules here, properties, are the ones that are shown here. Uh, the code here actually overrides what's in the storyboard because it executes after the storyboard loads. And yeah, that's how you can add a UI label in your iOS apps. I'll also mention that there's another, uh, there's another object called UI text view, which is similar to a label, but offers a couple more things in terms of functionality. I'll definitely do a video on that too. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, again, please hit that like button below. Leave comments if you have questions, concerns, any feedback. I always love hearing from you all. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.